Probably one of the biggest questions that I get all the time is if I only had $500 to invest, what would I invest in? And last year I did a video titled, if I only had $1,000 to invest, exactly what I do. And in that video, I laid out my plan for exactly what I would invest in for the next bull run, which I expect to happen 2024, 2025. It wasn't meant to be a short-term plan. It was definitely meant to be a longer term plan. But just to do a quick check-in, let's take a look at the results so far from that video. My plan in that video called for me taking that $1,000 and using it to farm the Arbitrum airdrop, which hadn't been confirmed at that time. And the results to date, not even a year later, using that $1,000 and following the exact steps laid out in the video would be that my $1,000 today would be worth $6,546.00 and 11 cents. A thousand dollars invested into that strategy not even a year ago would be up over 600% today. And that video is still up on my channel. Anyone could go back and watch the video and add up the numbers for themselves. And that's actually me being kind of conservative as I personally made around $8,000 from the airdrop. And I'm assuming that whoever's doing this strategy, they end up only making $5,000 from the airdrop. And even if you wanted to be ultra conservative and say that you only made $2,000 from the airdrop and you totaled 3,500, you would still be up over 300% on your initial investment. At the same time, if you were to go to the opposite end of the spectrum and do the actual amount that I actually made from the airdrop, you would have made $9,546. The overall point being that less than a year later, that plan has ended up being insanely lucrative. Had anyone done that exact plan with just $1,000, they would have anywhere from $3,000 to $10,000 today. And these are still really early days. Again, that strategy was meant for the next bull run. It was not meant to be like the result happening today. So I expect to be able to look back a couple of years from now and the results will be much, much higher. But what about if I only had $500 to invest and I had to start today, what plan or strategy would I use right now? And just a really quick disclaimer, this is not investment advice. This is maybe for, you know, ideas, maybe for entertainment, but you always got to do your own research. The first thing that I would do is spend all $500 and buy ETH. I would then take that $500 and bridge it over to ZK Sync era, where I would do things like use Sync Swap a few times. Maybe I'd provide liquidity. Maybe I'd use some of the other DEXs. And in general, I would play around with different projects in on the ZK Sync era network. However, for this investment scenario, since I only have $500, I would have to be extremely mindful of the fees. Currently, we are pre EIP 4844, which is an upgrade to ETH that will dramatically reduce the fees on layer twos like ZK Sync. And currently, even with ZK Sync being a layer two, fees can get pretty high during certain parts of the day. So I would have to be really mindful of the fees as I'm doing this. So I would probably install uh, some sort of browser extension so I could keep an eye on the Ethereum fees. And I would be looking for sub 20 GUE prices. And usually, for my experience, you can get good gas fees really early in the morning. Now, I would be looking to do as much of these transactions in like an organic way. So I am actually a really curious person. I like to explore these various blockchains. I like to try out these various apps and in general, try to find the ones that I think are going to maybe blow up and be big projects in the future. So I like to test them out, try them, kind of see what they're all about. And that's kind of how I do things. That's exactly what I did for the Arbitrum airdrop. I just tried out things. I explored things that I was genuinely curious about and it worked out really well. I was able to make over $8,000 from that airdrop. One thing I did do with the Arbitrum airdrop and I would probably try to do with this one as well would be I would try to use multiple wallets. I just in general kind of separated out certain strategies to different wallets. So I was playing with the Arbitrum network on you know one wallet and I was playing on the Arbitrum network on another wallet and I actually ended up getting more than one airdrop because I was doing that and I would probably try to do the same thing with ZK Sync as well. But obviously only if the bridging fees ended up making sense. Also for anyone that's interested there's actually a pretty cool tool called ZK ZK flow that helps you track all your actions on chain to see kind of just how you're doing so far. Going back to fees though, I would aim to keep my lifetime fees transacting on ZK Sync under $20. So my goal would be to keep my fees under $20. That's bridging fees, that's transaction fees, that's trading fees, all of that. I would aim to keep that under $20 lifetime because I only have $500 to spend for this strategy. So I can't spend too much on fees. The second thing I would do would be to bridge over funds to Linnea's mainnet. And I'll be using the same funds that I'm using to farm ZK Sync to farm Linnea. So I'm just gonna bridge those funds from ZK Sync back over to ETH. And then I'm gonna bridge them from ETH to the Linnea mainnet. And that's just what I'm gonna do. I've done that before with past airdrop uh, hunting strategies. It doesn't seem to hurt my odds. It's never affected it negatively. So 
that's what I'm gonna keep doing. And on Linnea, I'm gonna be following the exact same process. I'm gonna do swaps. I'm gonna play around with different projects on chain. I'm gonna be exploring, I'm gonna be trying things with really small amounts of money and you know, not going too crazy. And I'm gonna keep a really big eye on my gas fees. I'm gonna make sure that I'm swapping and doing all these things under 20 gui. I'm gonna make sure that my gas fees are really, really low. Cause again, I'm gonna have a lifetime budget for Linnea of $20 or under. So for ZK Sync, I'm having a lifetime budget of $20 or under. And for Linnea, I'm having a lifetime budget of $20 and under. Next, I'm going to be trying the Venom airdrop and this one won't require any fees. And I'm gonna start off by downloading and setting up the Venom wallet. Once set up, I'm gonna to go to the Venom website and they have this big old task list of things you can do to earn these NFTs. So they have like various things like tweet out this, uh, go join the Discord, go, you know, there's all these various like uh, achievements you can earn by doing these things and each achievement earns you an NFT. So I would go through and I would do every single one of those things. And actually as a part of these tasks, the first thing you do is you go and get 50 testnet tokens. So right off the bat, they're gonna give you some testnet tokens. These are not real tokens. They have zero value. They're only useful on the testnet, but those are gonna allow you to go do the other tasks that they're going to ask you to do. And obviously the point of all of these things, the point of going on ZK Sync and doing all these things, the point of going on Linnea and doing all these things, the point of going on Venom and doing all these things is to try to earn an airdrop from each of these different blockchains. So I wanna earn the airdrops because I don't have a lot of money. I only have $500. But these airdrops can be worth anywhere from a thousand to ten thousand to fifty thousand dollars if you really play your cards right. So, what's the maximum way that I can leverage my five hundred dollars? Is in my opinion, it's earning these airdrops, and that was my strategy last time with the thousand dollar video, and it paid off handsomely already before even we have a bull run. And again, since I only have a little bit of money, the best way I can maximize return, my return is by going after these airdrops. After the Venom airdrop, I'm gonna be going for the scroll airdrop. Again, another one that isn't gonna require any fees. I'm gonna go to the scroll site and I'm gonna add the scroll network to my wallet and I'm gonna add the Gorelli network to my wallet as well. I'm then going to go to an ETH faucet for the Gorelli network. It kind of sounds confusing. It is actually kind of confusing. I'm, I'll include a link in the description. I'll probably forget though. So if somebody just leave me like an angry comment, like, hey, you said you'd leave a link in the description, then I'll, I'll go do it. Uh, but if I remembered, there might be a link in the description. Otherwise you can try to look at the site that I'm on or you can just Google, you know, Gorelli ETH faucet. But you go to a Gorelli ETH faucet and you're gonna get Gorelli testnet tokens. The first thing that needs to be done is to take that testnet ETH that you got from the faucet and bridge it over to the scroll testnet. The second thing you're gonna do is nothing because that is all you can currently do at the time of me recording this video. And, and, or as far as I know, maybe there's something, maybe one of you guys knows some other crazy thing you can do. But so far, that's all you can do. I would do that and then just wait until there's more tasks to complete so I can just prime myself to get a big old scroll airdrop when the time comes. Okay, so now up to this point, we have already started farming the CK Sync airdrop. We started farming the Linnea airdrop. We started farming the Venom airdrop and we started farming the scroll airdrop. And we have paid a total of $40 in fees to do all of these various things. And just because, you know, it never goes according to plan, I'm gonna round that up to $50. So we spent $50 of our $500 meaning we have $450 left of our initial capital. From here, I would take 100 of that $450 and I would invest it into Akash. Akash is a really awesome project that's a part of the deep end sector of crypto. Think of it sort of like Airbnb, but for computing resources. Right now, there's an insane demand for GPUs because everyone's trying to build their own AI products. Everyone from Apple to Facebook to, you know, even like smaller companies are trying to build internal AIs to do various tasks. The problem is there just isn't enough compute and GPU to go around. Like everything needs these things. And you know, AI needs a ton of them. And as other things in other sectors are scaling, they need a ton of them. And so there's just not enough. And it's causing the prices of GPUs to absolutely skyrocket. Akash allows users to rent out their GPU power, tapping into a wealth of previously inaccessible compute. I'm doing an entire video on the deep end sector soon. I'm gonna do a deep dive into a lot of the crazy projects coming out of the sector. So if that's something that's interesting to you, make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for it. It's gonna be coming out. Overall, I'm personally extremely bullish on Akash and what they're building. And I think if they're successful, it could be massive come next bull run. Second, I would take another $100 and invest into a tiny crypto project called Index. The market cap for this project is currently only 12 million. And Index very simply aims to bring index funds on chain, which I think is a genius idea. The structured product sector in TradFi is massive and it only makes sense that it will eventually come on chain. Index funds are a really simple concept. Imagine instead of having to do all the research, having to bridge over funds to multiple chains, 
having to, you know, know what decks is to use all across the various chains. Imagine if instead you could invest in say a basket of the top projects on Arbitrum and it was called something like the Arbitrum Index. And imagine you could do the same for things like the metaverse, layer two tokens, NFT projects, the deep end sector, the real world asset sector, on-chain options, the Cosmos ecosystem, emerging small cap cryptos, the GameFi sector, AI tokens, and more, all with just the click of a button. By buying something like the Layer 2 Index, you would just click a button and then get exposure to a basket of assets, including Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon, and more. It's so simple, and this is the kind of thing, in my opinion, that we need to massively grow the space. Because something like this makes investing in crypto inherently more easy. It makes it easier easier for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing to just click a button and now they own all these assets across all these chains without having to have the know-how and the technical capabilities of actually navigating to go get those assets across all those chains. I mean, for me, there's like nothing worse than we're trying to go buy this asset on this other chain and you got to like get the gas for that and you got to figure out what like what bridge you got to use and you got to figure out how to bridge those assets over and then like you got to wait for the assets to get bridged over and then once you get there, you got to figure out what decks you got to use and then, you know, go through all the different permissions and all of that and those transaction fees, those gas fees, those bridging fees, all of that adds up. And especially for people who don't have a lot of money, it, uh, you know, maybe it doesn't even make sense for them to make that investment at that point versus really quickly just clicking a button and achieving the same result. Currently, Index has something called the Money Market Index, the Diversified Staked ETH Index, which I think is pretty cool, a Metaverse Index, and the DeFi Index. But over time, I expect that they'll expand to other sectors. And if they do well and they build a really easy UI that anyone can use, I expect the project could do really well during the next bull run. And I have a few other projects that I'd stick my money in, but really quick, if you're interested in staying up to date with the crypto market by joining the obsidian council you get access to monthly research on all the projects i'm looking at and investing into for the next bull run airdrop guides in-person meetups free access to the airdrop masterclass course which is a 299 dollars course access to the node operators course which is a course that teaches you how to run nodes to get airdrops as well as i'm about to launch my ghost tiger strategy course which will sell for two thousand dollars but for anyone who joins the obsidian council before i launch the course they will get grandfathered access completely free. There's a link in the description if you're interested in joining. Next, I'd stick $100 into Arbitrum. I'm extremely bullish about Arbitrum and Layer 2s in general long term. I recently made a video about Layer 2s and why next bull run, I think they're going to be massive. Arbitrum is one of the projects I talked about in that video, as well as a few other projects that I'm really excited about for next bull run. If you want to learn more, go ahead and check out that video. After Arbitrum, I would stick $100 into Ethereum. Ethereum is currently where I keep most of my money. And obviously, Ethereum isn't going to 1,000x next bull run. But I don't think it's insane to believe that it could 5 to 10x next bull run. That would turn my $100 into anywhere from $500 to $1,000, which isn't bad. Now, my goal with investing in ETH would be simply to grow my investment capital before next DGEN season. DGEN season typically comes after every other good project has already gone up. So it starts with Bitcoin and ETH. Bitcoin and ETH skyrocket. And then people are like, oh, you know, Bitcoin and ETH have gone up. What other projects can I invest in? They look at all the other blue chip and good projects and they start investing in those. Those skyrocket. And then, you know, the last people to the table are like, oh my gosh, I missed this, I missed that. But what about this crazy, you know, cat project over here with laser eyes that's promising 10,000% APY? Maybe that'll go up next. It's a season where you're mostly dealing with extremely low quality brand new projects that are more like experiments in tokenomics. Typically, these aren't good projects to hold long term. They're only good projects to hold short term if you know what you're doing. And if you're making these asymmetric bets and saying, hey, I'm gonna stick $100 in, I'm hoping to pull out $10,000 or $20,000 or something crazy like that. That kind of wild stuff does happen. But what happens more often for people that don't know what they're doing is they'll stick $100 in and they'll pull out zero because, you know, the project will rug or they'll lose their funds or, you know, it's all kinds of crazy stuff could happen. That's why I said for people that are crazy risk tolerant, this might be a play, but it's definitely one where you got to be on your toes and really know what you're doing. Last cycle during this season, I was able to turn $760 into over $150,000, as well as I was able to turn $3,000 into over $600,000. So the crazy gains you can get during this season are absolutely insane. But a lot of people, like I said, more often than not, lose all their money they invest 
because they really don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to take profits. They don't really have a strategy and they just think everything's going to go to the moon like Bitcoin and last, you know, for multiple years. Not really recognizing that a lot of these projects are basically just experiments running different various tokenomics ideas and concepts that may or may not work. And typically it's that they, they, they won't work. But for this thought experiment, since I'm talking about like what would I do if I only had $500, that's probably what I would do. I would just make sure my position sizes were good. I'd make sure I was really careful with my money and I'd make sure I spread it out and I didn't you know, throw all my eggs in one basket. Let's also say for the purpose of this experiment, I don't have a lot of the knowledge that I currently have in the space. If that was the case, I would spend between now and Degen season learning everything I absolutely could about crypto, about uh, you know the technology and everything so that I could spot scams and Ponzi's a lot sooner. That was one of the mistakes that I made last season is that some of these projects I was like, hey, I got kind of flirted with the idea of like, maybe this will work. Maybe this will be a good long-term project. Uh, I was still taking profits. I was still doing the right things, but that was a dangerous way to think. And that could have got me into a lot more trouble. And there was definitely a couple mistakes that I made where I didn't recognize a project for what it is. And it burned me pretty hard. So I would spend between now and then really understanding the space so that doesn't happen. I can see the space clearly and I'm able to manage that risk a lot better. Typically my plan during the season is whenever a project doubles or triples, I take my initial off the table and that way I can't lose and then I'm taking profits along the way. Okay, so all in all, to give you a good overview of what's happened so far, that would leave us with farming the ZK Sync, the Linea, the Venom and the Scroll airdrops. And that would leave us with investing $100 into Kosh, which is like a smaller, high to medium risk token token, $100 into index, which is like an extremely small high risk token, $100 in Arbitrum, which is like a bigger medium risk token, and $100 in the ETH, which is like a larger lower risk token. Leaving us $50, which we're going to assume just gets spent like bridging over things, doing transaction fees, etc. We're gonna, we're gonna just for the purpose of this experiment, pretend that $50 gets spent doing things. Because overall, like for an experiment like this, it's hard to account for like every fee or thing that might pop up. So it's just kind of easier to overestimate and say that you know, we're spending maybe a little bit more than we actually would maybe have to. And that's it. That would be my strategy if I only had $500 to invest today. That's not the only strategy. There's plenty of other tokens and airdrops that would have made sense to invest into as well. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit that like button. If you have anything you want to add, let me know in the comments. And if you want to follow along for the journey and watch more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified each time I release a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.